What is good? Oh, a nice OG. We're going to grip it and rip it. We always smell beer everywhere. Oh, Stone Cold says it's not theatrical if you're just not spilling any beer. That was his whole deal. He had to shake it up, spill it around, shoot it all over the place. Then people hell are yeah. believing you. Oh, yeah, I got a hell yeah. What? <laughs> all right. We're going to talk a little Julio Jones today. We, we are uh, next to each other. That's weird. And uh, no, no, no big co tonight. A little late for big co. So we got the vax, kids. Get the vax. We're ready to roll. And uh, Jay Wayne, how you doing? I'm doing fine. I'm doing swell. Rip it, rip it again. How about yourself? You doing okay? I'm, I'm gonna do even better here. I'm doing great. We're here. We're gonna talk a little Julio Jones today, and uh, I gotta figure out what our modus operandi is here. Mm, I don't speak Pig Latin. I think it's just regular Latin. Mm, I think you're wrong. Yeah. Uh, could be. I, I think you're angry. Oh, wait, I do speak pig Latin. <laughs> the, the the usage may have been a little off there, but we're going to uh, let's figure out how we're going to get through this thing. So Julio Jones, a lot of he's everywhere right now. Hot topic. Not a lot to talk about. And once June 1st comes, they're going to be just bursting at the seams about what's going to happen. But it seems that the I think it's a done deal come June 1st. I think you think it's happening that day. I think that. It might happen before we even finish putting this episode out. Mm, I think. I think it's. I think it'll it might, break. Like it's I think not it might official, be a minute, but it'll I think break. Gonna, I think they're going to continue to try to <sighs> gather up the best offer they can get because uh, we'll, we'll talk about it in a second here. But basically, the all-time leader in average reception yards per game that is Julio Jones has seemingly played his last snap as an Atlanta Falcon. He's out of there. I mean, everyone at this point has seen the Fox Sports clip of. Shannon and and skip 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 which that was that's a that's a PR move by Julio right like that's him I, and his boy Shannon setting that up there's I'm with Rosillo on this there's no way oh, look that at you. Shannon Roles Sharp reversed yeah what, what do you mean I'm not I'm usually not, I'm usually, like I'm uh, I heard right. Rosillo say right well I, I try I don't listen to too many people but you got to check out that Rosillo podcast whenever he's talking about Football, anyway. It's decent. Well, he's a basketball And life guy, advice. Yeah, life advice is good, too. I can just watch basketball. I don't... I don't uh, just, yeah. I let, let me get the interviews. And... I can go either way on that. Um, so, obviously, like you said, there is to basically put your whole friendship and, and telling Shannon Sharp anything on the line like that and not have it be semi, at least, Which, talked about at some point, maybe. Right. You can't just call your boy up on national television without him knowing right now that's that's a skip move i wouldn't put it past skip but <laughs> I'm they're, in shannon. Cahoots. they're in cahoots they are in cahoots but i feel like shannon might be you know he's got a little more loyalty yeah. to his friends than skip yeah. does i feel like. i just don't think you'd blow that whole thing up over that i think that's right. accurate right um but right. you know I, and that's a way for julio to be like hey guys exactly i'm coming out of the trade closet Come get me. Right. Scoop me up because I want out. Right. Yeah, I'm not going to Dallas, or maybe maybe that's exactly <laughs> where he's going. Well, the random Dallas shade was not only awesome, but surprising. He, there's, he can't be going there. If, no. If, well, it wasn't that. The whole reason was that he had a Dallas Cowboys shirt on photographed. That so. is weird that you'd be wearing another team. It is weird. That'd be like if, choose like, any NBA squad. would be like squad, if he was not, wearing a shirt that had Calvin Johnson on it. Like. <laughs> Well, you want to wear a Calvin Johnson shirt. That's one thing. But I mean, I guess, he's, Cowboys? I guess since he's retired, but if you guys were still competing, like it'd be weird to just well, be yeah. like, I'm wearing a Calvin Johnson shirt. Fair. Um, unless it was like a brand. But if he had like Calvin Johnson, like making a sick catch on a shirt, it'd be weird. <laughs> um, anyway. So, yeah, no, I agree. I think the fact that it kind of gives them an out to say, hey, I'm ready to roll. It gives the Falcons a, a little bit of, a, of an out as well to be like, hey, this guy's really out there. Um, it makes him not look terrible in the situation. Um, but it, it makes Julio Jones basically say that, hey, I am out here. I want to go play for a winner. I'm ready to get out of here and, and makes the phone ring even more and not just maybe puts the ball at least a little bit more in Julio's court than the Atlanta Falcons court. Not that they obviously have to be the ones that pull the trigger, but he seemingly is basically telling national audience that I'm out of here. So... Interesting. So there's also the whole salary cap thing where awesome Twitter guy is telling you like, well, if 
if Julio Jones, if the salary cap wasn't a myth, was a myth or wasn't a myth, like why would the Falcons be trying to trade Julio Jones? Well, probably. So you've said that before, right? The salary cap's a myth. It's made up. It's not, nece- it's not necessarily made up, but there's better there's there's better offices at handling how to f- structure and move around money than than other people. And yeah, sure, if we could get the Julio Jones money off our books and not look like a bunch of ungrateful assholes, then why would we not do that? And Julio Jones is basically giving you that out, being like, "I want to play for somebody else." So, I mean, what are we doing? Bottom line is the teams can do whatever they want. If they want to sign a guy, the they can find teams, a way. Just like every other, can figure out how to manipulate this this thing. And I don't. It's not necessarily a myth. There are some confines that you have to work in because if not, everybody would just sign everybody. But Julio Jones is basically saying, "Hey, I want to play for a winner." And now, like I said, the Atlanta Falcons are now like, "Well, I, we can get this off of our books and figure something out, sign other guys, and not look like ungrateful assholes in this entire situation." So. Salary cap. If the salary cap's a myth. Why are the Falcons trying to trade this guy? Like awesome Twitter guy. Like, well, because yeah, you can get this off your books, and you don't look terrible about doing so, and you can get a little bit of value for Julio Jones. Because as this thing goes, you're never going to get the value that Julio Jones is actually worth to a team this year. But like, similar to fantasy, which you, we'll get to. But right, yeah, you could say we want a first, but like in reality, like if you got a second and a conditional third, that would be great. Like right. It's just the way it kind of works, and like you said, we'll, we'll get to that kind of stuff in a minute. But and, and Atlanta is a little bit strapped for cap, and they want to sign Grady Jarrett, a younger, more long term player. And if they free up that money, then they now can can do th- moves like that and get a little bit younger. Right. They obviously kept Matt Ryan and didn't draft his replacement. Yeah, and but- Julio is not going to be like, hey, I'm going to do this solid and restructure all this money and do all these other things. Like he's trying to get out of there. And, you know, like the well, June he- first thing is, is that he you can split up some of that dead cap. He expressed some dissent or dis- uh, disdain disdain for the owner there and, and how <clears throat> stressful he made negotiations throughout the entire time. I remember Julio showing up for like a whole year without a contract because they just don't negotiate during the season or right. something. And he's like, fine, I'm going to come and do my job. And like, you know, if he's getting put through a strenuous situation, I can see not wanting to do a team of solid. Like right. I'm the best in the league. Like I'm one of the best wide receivers right. in the game. I change the way defenses play. You have to treat me as such. Yeah, and I mean... Because he's a freak. He's a freak's freak. He's a freak. That's kind of another point in the direction of like, yeah, this was maybe semi-orchestrated. Maybe the exact timing of when it happened wasn't necessarily orchestrated, but like Julio's not a guy... who There's not a whole lot of Julio out there doing or saying anything. Like he's a pretty buttoned up guy. Now there were some, some... on air talent has been like, well, he, you know, he was cursing a little bit in the beginning of that. So if he was, on, if he knew he was on, maybe he wouldn't have been using the language he was using because he is a pretty buttoned up guy. But I feel like, you know, I, there had to have been, he's so calculated and measured, it seems that I just feel like this wouldn't have just slipped under there and Shannon wouldn't have just blown his reputation with him right. for that. So Cause it, that's going to ruin Shannon's relationship with other players too. Right. Cause he, you gonna call me up, Shannon? Now I gotta wonder if I'm on live TV to every single player that he knows now moving forward. Like, right? And Julio knows what time Shannon's on TV. For, I'm sure if that's his boy. At least he knows he's on TV around some time. Maybe right. you know. I'm sure he's not keeping it all dialed directly in. But none anyhow. of these things happen just by accident. Everyone has a yeah. PR team calculating these moves. Yeah. All right. So let's get on to the betting odds of where where Julio is going to land currently. Right now, there's a there's like I don't know ten teams. One, two, I had counted three. nine, but this one throws the Jaguars, the Dolphins, the Cowboys. Got in eleven there. here. Yeah, I mean, I, so we got the Patriots at the 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 odds on favorite, and oh, what a Patriots move! <laughs> uh, yeah, because this list for betting odds doesn't include the Packers and it doesn't include the Rams, right? And the Colts are on there, so yeah. So the, so so Patriots, Niners, Titans, Raiders, Ravens, Chargers, Colts, Packers. Oh, there's the Packers. Dolphins, Jaguars, Cowboys, Rams. Just a ton of teams rumored to be in 
trade the negotiation. Yeah, and the betting odds are Patriots, 49ers, Titans, Raiders, Ravens, Chargers, Colts, Packers, Dolphins, Jaguars, Cowboys, in that order, sequentially, of how they have it stacked up. So, so you like, know, where's, like, your favorite, like, Julio Jones landing spot? Like, oh, where yeah. is, like, your ideal, oh, yeah, like, yeah, let's, let's project, it. let's yeah. project. Let's project. Um, Packers, baby, that's what I want. I, want I mean, the Packers. If the Packers front all office, their problems. if the Packers front office wanted to offer an olive branch, this would be the olive branch to the the Julio branch. Would be the you know me and Julio yeah. down by the schoolyard. And if you want a nice, <laughs> if you want a nice uh, chuckle about where things were in the eighties or wherever that shout was, shout out to Paul Simon trying to, to Paul Simon trying it, to bring things together. That video for Julio down by the schoolyard starts off with Big Daddy Kane and Biz Marquee, yeah, and it goes to basketball and alley-oops and double dutch and jump roll and, and just all over the place fantastic just wild hilarious music video wild. for me and julio i was checking that out last night whilst doing some research because <laughs> why wouldn't i be it's in standard definition i don't know if oh. you kids know what that is but <laughs> it's grainy it's what we had before hd <laughs> yeah so i mean for me obviously the titans seem like a, a really good fit it's Josh Reynolds is basically the only person of note behind uh, but you're AJ so, Brown. You're so AJ Brown heavy right now. You're so bullish. Wouldn't yeah, that I, just I, like I de- he's my wide receiver one in dynasty for would he sure. Still be if Julio goes there. I I, I don't I, I think so. I mean I think it's got to hurt you a little bit for at least a season. It and has I, to. But I mean it's it's basically wherever he lands is going to ruin somebody's not maybe not ruin but it could really ruin somebody's fantasy value but like definitely take not it down Packers. a peg. I don't think it messes with Devontae at all. Maybe it makes well, his life I mean, even well, a little easier well, that, and he's already got that case, relationship. Then, if that's the case then AJ Brown when healthy and playing was absolutely a stud with a guy like Corey Davis. I mean I'm not putting Corey Davis and Julio in this but I'm just saying like targets wise like Corey Davis was seeing his fair share of targets, so AJ Brown could still eat and be very productive and be very strong. And AJ Brown's a, a freak after the catch. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would it would definitely hurt a little bit, but like I'm still super bullish on AJ Brown. Like the Titans make a whole lot of sense from a winning perspective. The Packers on the olive branch, the Patriots. It sounds great. I, I don't love it. Uh, just, just they do have like a whole defense coming back. They do. I mean, it's not they about signed a bunch just, of acquisitions, so they could be I in just, the mix again. It just doesn't seem like a great like Cam. Just doesn't seem like the best facilitator to like. I don't love it for Julio. I like the situation that Cam's in right now with the the players that he has around him, and I, I don't love it for Julio at all. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, he'll still be fine because he's awesome, and Cam's gonna find him, and they'll figure it out. But like. I definitely don't love it as as much as a lot of these. If it goes to the Niners, like you said, there's familiarity there. Where He's played with Kyle Shanahan. This is a guy who may or may not practice a whole lot, may or may be a little nicked up here and there, plays through a lot of it. That, that's the, a common uh, misnomer about him is that he doesn't play all that much. Uh, but well, a guy like Kyle, where he could put him in that offense that he knows and has some familiarity with, where you could dial back the veteran presence and maybe prolong a little Julio. And I don't know why he wouldn't want to be excited about going to the 49ers. Um, I think that would be great. And they do have the cap space to make it happen. so They could figure it out. That's well, what, like that's what well, the 49ers there's lists, do. There's lists of teams that have available right. cap space, Patriots being one of them. And, and and the Niners. I think the other the other big one for me right now is definitely the Colts. Like there isn't. Yeah, I love Paris Campbell. I want to put him on every team. Yeah, I like Michael Pittman. Yeah, Paris Campbell for a season on and getting the deep ball back in that offense with Carson Wentz. But you throw Julio Jones in the mix of that offense, and I think he just comes in and hogs some targets on that offense, and and just they they put him in the right situations to win. So I wouldn't be upset about that either. Don't love the Rams. Uh, don't love why the, not. Or sorry, don't love the Ravens. Um, oh, that would be the worst. Could be, could be okay because I think he would hog targets there as well. Um, but and and you know, I hate the Rams personally because I don't. Obviously, I don't want them to go there because uh, I'm a Stafford Niners guy. To Julio, but Stafford he knows how to... to Julio to Bobby Woods to, to Cooper Cup. It's a tough, tough thing to defend. You got Cam Akers and Hendo in the backfield, so you know, tough uh, situation to defend there. The perfect one is the Packers, though. I mean, they, Rod, they, they, they they need Julio. They need. They, need they don't it. have anybody else besides Devontae Adams. The total circle. Yeah, would exactly. Would make the most sense 
to really patch that thing up. I think the most sense Arrow really would report to OTAs I think the tomorrow. most sense is the Titans or the Niners as far as the way he fits volume, yada, yada, yada. Obviously, going to the Niners hurts Ayuk, Debo, and Kittle a little bit. It has to somewhat because there just isn't, uh, you know, if Julio is going to get in there, I think I think on a good team that schemes him right, he's going to hog targets. Like, Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the whole injury-prone misnomer fits him perfectly to go to 49ers because they could all just take turns being, being hurt. Injured? But, yeah, sure. you know, Julio... He missed seven games this past year, so the recency bias is back. Uh, but, I mean, the previous six seasons, I believe, since 2013, um, he had a screw put in his foot in 2011. He had it reinserted in 2013. And since then... He had a better thread pattern. He's only missed four games since 2013 up through 2019. So that's... That's not very much, and in those years, he was crushing. Oh, he's that's, that's, he's a fantasy fucking god who's yeah. just re- absolutely absurd. Which is why you know you'd be excited for him to really land anywhere. And and obviously being in Atlanta, I'm not upset about it. But like he wants to go somewhere that can win. I think the Titans can win. I think the Niners can win. I think the Packers can win. I think the Colts can win. Patriots kind of up for discussion. I think they'll be better than they were. And like you said, a lot of players coming back. But eh, who knows? And they signed some other free agents and that. The Cam Raiders, the Raiders are never out of this thing, and this seems that would fit, be like a Raiders move tenfold because they don't really have an alpha right now. They got two young guys. Aguilar was the alpha there last year, and he's in New England, and it's Darren Waller. Like so, and the Raiders are never out, and that just seems like a guy who John Gruden would just pay a uh, lot, just cream himself <laughs> for. This guy. Yeah. I mean, I don't I don't love that, but I guess Derek Carr could facilitate. But it, but it really I mean, like it wouldn't it like would it be the it wouldn't like I don't love it, but like it would be fucking awesome. He would absolutely be the he there Gruden would be like, Hey, we're we just paid a lot for Julio. We're just throw it to Julio. Julio and Waller. Julio, Waller. Waller Julio Julio Waller Julio, Julio Waller. <laughs> um All right, so let's get to a little bit of the fantasy impact here of this situation. I don't think it's Dis, we should note off the top that the M, the the ADP of Julio right now on according to DLF is sixty five, which is sixty five. Is yeah, and all the mock drafts that we've done, I never ever pull the trigger on Julio. But then when you put it on paper and you say sixty five, Jesus, I mean, when you're in a new startup, it's it's really hard to take a guy like that. But right now, as far as uh, not talking about startup startup time and just trading for him because your roster's already constructed and you know where you're at and you kind of know where you stand or you have a feeling of where your team is. Like, it's not really unlike where Atlanta is right now currently in the situation that they face. Like, yeah, you're probably not getting a first round pick for Julio Jones anymore. But like, as soon as you trade him away, like he is absolutely outperforming the the trade value that you just got for him and he's going to make you look like an idiot that's just what it is going to be you're going to be like god Julio just crushed this year and you just traded him away for a two and a conditional three or in fantasy you traded him away for two twos or whatever and like I'll give you two twos right now if I feel like my team is half decent for Julio Jones and and like I don't exactly know what it's going to take but like I don't think anybody in their right mind is giving you a first like yeah hey if I won the championship and I'm in I just don't think that's what it's going to take. And I don't think that's a lot of what fantasy owners mindset is right now. It's like, yeah, if I was one twelve, I just won. I feel really good about my team. Maybe I'm not getting Terrace Marshall or Rondell Moore at that point. And I, you know, I've already feel really good about my team. So I add another awesome veteran like Julio in the draft for one twelve for a thirsty guy whose team sucks and he's trying to rebuild. Yeah, maybe that's a possibility, but for the most part, like I think it's a couple of twos we were talking about in the live draft the other day that we were doing that we have two twos now. Like, who could we put on the team for two twos? And we were kind of messing around. Fuck up with Julio Jones for two twos on that team with four running backs and half PPR. And I'm ready to roll. The running backs being Jonathan Taylor, Dalvin Cook, uh, Najee Harris, and uh, David Montgomery. Like, and now all I have to do is start two receivers, and one of them could be Chase, one of them could be uh, DJ Moore, and the other one could be Julio Jones. If I can rotate those around, like, fuck yeah, yeah, let's go, ready to roll, ready to roll, ready to roll, ready to roll. Hello, are you? How you doing? Stu Finer totally ruined that for me. Anytime I hear somebody say that they're ready to roll, I just want to be like. 
Ready to roll! Ready to roll! Ready to roll! I got energy like a motherfucking animal! And I'm ready to roll! But that's really what it's gonna come down to is that it's just really a tough situation for owners. Is that it is hard to get rid of a guy like Julio Jones, who, you know, you read it 2019, wide receiver three, 2018, wide receiver four, 2017, wide receiver three, 2016, wide receiver six, 2015, wide receiver two. Like just a just a hoss all the way around. And and probably gonna worst stud case, out again. Worst case scenario, you're basically getting like fourteen hundred yards and six ish touchdowns. And I can't imagine he's just gonna fall off a cliff and be dead after another year. Like I, I, mean, I think I he to might have back. one more great elite year, especially if he lands in the right spot. But like, you know, I think you, you could easily get it. It depends on what he wants to do. But like, I feel like you know, right. I think the biggest risk is will he want to call it quits and and it seems like he doesn't right now he could have just ridden off into the sunset if i think he it depends to, on the scenario and the amount of chance that he has to win and get that elusive super bowl really is what, what it comes down to how he wants to play the re the back half of this the back nine here or the back three or whatever you want to fucking right. call it here right yeah i mean i had to go back and watch some clips and some highlights and some various games of julio in 2020 just to make sure that he still had it because my recollection was that when he's on the field he still looks like julio and i mean he still looks like julio he still can get behind defenses he can still separate and catch balls in traffic over the middle and he can crush after the catch and he just he he got banged up and he he sat out the rest of the year. I I traded a late first for him. Well, I traded what I thought would be a late first for him in a, in a, in a dynasty league last year, earlier in the season. He happened to proceed to miss the rest of the season. I still finished second, so that was one eleven that I gave up. And now I'm thinking to myself when we started to do the show, like, oh damn, now I got this Julio Jones. He's fucking thirty two. He. It's not going to be with Matt Ryan anymore. And like, is he getting old? Am I, and, and this, my team's a little bit older. I did draft CeeDee Lamb and DeAndre Swift last year. So that, that, that like shoves some youth into my lineup. But I have Alvin Kamara. I have Keenan Allen and Tyler Lockett and uh, Julio Jones now. So that team's ready to roll. And as I got more into this for this show, <laughs> I was feeling better about my Julio. Like, as long as he doesn't go to the Ravens. I should be just fine with Julio next year and ready to roll. Ready to roll. Like I yeah. got ETN on my team. So, I mean, oh, best landing spots. <laughs> like, that was mostly just for y'all. Yeah, I don't give a don't. fuck. Stop yeah, it we, with that bullshit. We usually, ra we rarely talk about landing spots. Who fucking but cares? He'll land somewhere and then we can talk about it. Right, right. But let me get him in the Packers. Let me get a Rod throw him in the ball. I mean, let me get him on the Niners selfishly, but I'd love to see him on the Colts, on the Rams. Would be, what does that do would to the? Fun. What does that do to? And the Raiders for fantasy stock would be fun. But like, if he wants to win, well, I don't. I don't he know. He's not going to go. I don't there. know how much control he has. I don't know what the trade clause. Well, that's the question. Is, is like, how can he say I want to go to a wiener? Like, how how does he just have that clout? Because he's well, he's going to have to restructure. Because that's the thing. He only has like. Two million guaranteed on the next two years of his contract, which I think is part of why he wants out of Atlanta. He says he wants to win, but he hates negotiating with Arthur Smith or Arthur blank. Brown blank, and and he and he doesn't have that much guaranteed money left. So he wants out. He wants to go to a winner. They're going to have to restructure. So the trade partner has to be willing to restructure with him and him with them for it to even work so i guess you go to the team who's about to trade for you and be like hey we need to work out this restructure and if we can't then i'm not gonna re you don't don't trade for me right. i guess so i guess he can probably control somewhat yeah. where he goes and, and i think i think he's gonna have to again, take what he can get again atlanta's probably gonna take the best deal but there i think you know i think a team who isn't ready to win what are you doing trading what you perceive to be some okay capital away to, to do this anyway. So, you know, is what it is the, the Falcons should do him, uh, you know, a decent solid by putting him in the, in a position that he wants to be in for the most part for being of service of that long. But we both know that that's, and the owner said, how this said he was so. mad. He was disappointed that Julio would out him on, he would treat him. Whatever. Like Arthur Blank seems like a dildo, but does whatever. he? I don't know. He looks like a nice guy. Yeah. He doesn't okay. He doesn't give you like Dan Snyder vibes <laughs> or or the Texans heritage. Yeah. yeah. Vibes. I don't know what we accomplished here today. Uh just a little Julio Jones talk. That's what we'd accomplished. 
So here we are. There we were. Hit me with that subby. Scribey. We're going scribies. <laughs> Back half. Comment below. Subby or scribey? Which one's better? Scribies. Scribey sounds like an STD. It sounds really like... Says, oh, yeah, subbies. 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 <laughs> That's way better than... Than uh, getting scribies from a chick. That chick gave me scribies, man. Let me get them scribies, dog. (laughs) Got them scribies, man. They're like itch. (laughs) No, subbies. Subbies. Hit me with that subby. Hit me with that five-star review on iTunes, please. Hey, also, y'all, I'm really sorry. Last show, my mic wasn't on. I don't know what the fuck happened. J. Wayne Mab A's and V's over here, and I just just didn't. I just blew it. Garbage. uh, We'll see how see if anybody notices or gets mad about it. But I felt yep. terrible. I was like, we should just record re record the show. And I'm like, them boys aren't gonna go for Not that. Happening. And so, <laughs> I was like, maybe I can just re record myself. Man, I don't have time for this shit. <laughs> just have to eat my lumps. I'm really mad them boys didn't point it out. Y'all boys should have pointed that it bad out on, in the ears. So mm, maybe you got bad ears. I mean, I have exquisite ears. I have exquisite ears. You have trash ears. Whatever. Uh, so we'll be back with a super flex <laughs> mock. <laughs> Um, and we're 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 ready to roll with that pretty soon. So we got a little super flex rookie mock ready to go, and then we'll be on regular old mocks. Doing startups, some, doing some real startups. Yeah, getting real. We we'll move on from rookies. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. All right, y'all. Appreciate you, Scrabbies. Peace. <laughs>